If you pay attention to the messages in this video, you will discover the optimal way to breathe to manifest your desires. Let's study the teachings of Louise Hay, an American motivational speaker and the founder of Hay House. Her many New Thought self-help publications such as 1984's You Can Heal Your Life have helped countless people. Relaxation can also benefit us. Relaxation can also benefit us. Relaxation is vitally necessary for tapping into one's inner strength, because when you are anxious and uptight, you shut down your energy. It takes only a few minutes per day to allow the body and mind to release tension and relax. Take a few deep breaths, close your eyes, and release any tension you may have been carrying at any time. As you exhale, center yourself and whisper to yourself, I love you, everything is well. Daily meditation sends the message that you don't have to go through life anxious and uptight. I also advise calming the mind and listening to one's own inner wisdom. Our culture has made meditation mysterious and difficult to accomplish, and yet meditation is one of the oldest and most straightforward practices. Simply enter a state of relaxation and repeat softly to yourself words such as love and peace or anything significant to us. Om is an ancient sound I frequently employ in my workshops, and it seems to function quite nicely. We may even say, I love myself, or I forgive myself, or I am forgiven, then simply observe for a bit. Some people believe that in order to meditate, they must stop their thoughts from thinking. However, the mind cannot be stopped. However, we may slow down our ideas and then allow them to flow freely. Some individuals sit with a notepad and pencil and jot down their negative thoughts because they appear to evaporate more quickly when written down. If we can reach a state in which we can observe our ideas float by, we will experience fear of thought and fury. Now, there is affection followed by a catastrophe. There is an abandoned thought and a happy thought, but you should not give them any weight. Then we will begin to utilize our immense power wisely. You may practice meditation anywhere and make it a habit. Consider meditation as concentrating on a higher force. You develop a relationship with yourself and your inner wisdom. You can accomplish it in any manner you like. Some individuals enter a state of meditation while jogging or walking. Again, there is nothing wrong with doing things differently. I enjoy getting down on my knees in the garden and digging in the soil. This is a wonderful meditation for me. Joan Bohr's Mind and the Body, Mending the Body is an easy to understand book on meditation that is highly recommended. Visualization is also of significant importance, and there are numerous teachings available. In his book, Becoming Well Again, Dr. Carl Simon Trun advises numerous visualization techniques for cancer patients, which frequently produce remarkable outcomes. You may strengthen your affirmation by creating a clear, positive image through imagery. Numerous of you have inquired about the visualizations you employ alongside your affirmations. The most crucial thing to remember about visualizations is that they must align with your personality. If not, your visualizations will fail. A woman with cancer, for instance, imagining the healthy cancer cells in her body attacking and killing the tumor. At the conclusion of the presentation, she questioned whether she had done it right and felt that it wasn't helping her. So I questioned her, are you a killer person? And she responded, I personally do not enjoy creating conflict within my body. Consequently, I suggested that shelter her visualization to one that was a bit gentler. I believe it would be more effective to include pictures such as the sun melting the six cells or a magician altering them with a wand. When I got cancer, I imagined clean, calm water sweeping away the cancerous cells from my body. We must engage in visualizations that are subconsciously less offensive to us. Those of us who have sick family members or friends do them an injustice by constantly witnessing their illness. Visualize them, then send them positive energy. However, remember that the recovery is ultimately dependent on them. If you are receptive, you can provide them with a variety of high-quality audio tapes with guided visualizations and meditations to assist them with this process. If so, simply provide them with a description of your residence that anyone with a sexual fetish can visualize. Visualizations include visualizing what you would do to a person who has wronged you. It is incredible what the mind can accomplish. Fifth, the next step is to compliment oneself. Criticism destroys one's inner spirit. The praise strengthens it. Recognize your strength, your God self. All of us are manifestations of the infinite intelligence. When you criticize yourself, you diminish your ability to create. Start with the smallest details. Tell yourself you are fantastic. If you perform the action once and then cease doing it, it doesn't work. 
keep at it, even if only for one minute. And believe me, it does get easier. But there for yourself the next time you attempt something new, different, or that you are still learning and are not particularly excellent at. It is very exciting. I initially spoke at the New York City Church of Religious Science. I recall it quite clearly. It was a meeting on a Friday at noon, and people had written questions and placed them in a basket for the speaker. I brought the basket to the podium, answered the questions, and provided a little treatment after each one. I whispered to myself as I walked away from the podium, Luis, you were great. Considering this was the debut performance, by the time you have completed this task six times, you will be an expert. I did not criticize myself by saying, oh, you neglected to mention this or that. I did not want the second time to be frightening. If I punished myself the first time, I would punish myself again, and I would fear speaking at the conclusion. And after a few hours, I considered what I could alter to enhance. I have never erred myself. I took great care to compliment and congratulate myself on my excellence, and after conducting six meetings, I was an expert. I believe this strategy can be used to all aspects of our lives. I spoke at the meetings for an extended period of time. This course was excellent since it helped me to think on my feet. Permit yourself to embrace good regardless of whether you believe you deserve it. The hesitation to accept good in our life is a result of the belief that we do not deserve it. It's what prevents us from achieving our goals. How could we produce something beneficial for ourselves if we believe we do not deserve good? Consider the laws of merit in your household. Do you feel well enough? Astute enough? Are you tall enough? Whatever the case may be, the appearance is acceptable. And what is your reason for living? You're obviously here for a reason, and it's not simply to get a new vehicle every few years. What are you willing to undertake to get fulfillment? Are you willing to participate in affirmation and visualization therapies? Are you capable of forgiving? Are you open to meditating? How much mental exertion are you prepared to expend to transform your life and create the life you desire? Sixth, loving yourself entails providing for yourself. Reach out to friends and accept their assistance. You are being incredibly strong. When you need assistance and ask for it, so many of you have developed such self-reliance and independence, you can't ask for assistance because your ego won't let it. Rather than attempting to accomplish everything on your own and then being furious with yourself when you fail, try contacting support groups. In every city, support groups are available. There are 12-step programs for virtually any issue. In some regions, healing circles or church-affiliated organizations exist. If you cannot find what you are looking for, you may create your own group. It is not as frightening as you may believe. Gather two or three friends who share your concerns and establish a few ground rules for the group. Have a book or recordings to study or listen to. If you do it with a loving heart, your small group will expand. People will be magnetically attracted. Don't fret if it begins to expand and your meeting rooms become inadequate. If you don't know what to do, write my office and we'll provide you guidelines and instructions on how to lead a small group. You can truly be there for one another. People worry about too many things at once, according to Luis Hay, and do not allow themselves peace of mind. Luis, when a person does not relax, he or she is only putting herself under great tension, which leads to worry and moreover limits the body's capacity for greatness. According to her teachings, people should find time during the day to relax and let go through meditation or other means, because if they are not calm, they will not be able to perform their tasks to the maximum potential. I hope you enjoyed the film, and please feel free to express your comments in the comment area.